Hello everybody. Welcome to the Plain Mundane Show. Today we're going to talk about who is Ea from Humanity's Extraterrestrial Origins by Dr. Arthur Horn. This was archived in November of 1999 from a website called Reptilian Agenda. The author of Humanity's Extraterrestrial Origin, E.T. Influences on Humankind's Biological and Cultural Evolution. Arthur Horn is an anthropologist, a scientist, and believes E.T.'s were heavily involved with our biological, cultural, and evolutionary development, even starting our first civilization. Unfortunately, the negative forces have mostly been in control throughout the 300,000 years or so of history. He was bothered by the extremely rapid rise in humans in the last 10,000 years or so. A spiritual event happened that changed his mind about Darwinian evolution and has set out to study the spiritual and physical world. Horn is from a small Kansas town and was raised in a Christian family. He was bothered by the different sects and strife throughout history and eventually became an atheist. His engineering interests shifted to philosophy, but since he was drafted into the army, he spent a lot of time reading Darwinian books. He became a Darwinist and eventually got a Ph.D. in anthropology at Yale. He married Lynette, a very spiritual person, in 1988. In 1989, they had a spiritual experience that caused him to abandon his materialistic point of view. He resigned his professorship at Colorado State, and they moved to Mount Shasta area of Northern California. For him, the Mesopotamian accounts of our origins are the best. There are many holes in Darwinism that is not recognized in academia. For example, the origin of life on this planet as currently stated, the odds against random chemical combination are calculated to be so unlikely that it can be ruled out. Also, the fact that Homo erectus lived for a million years, but only 25 to 30,000 years ago, the Cro-Magnon man, a fully modern human, suddenly appeared. The tradition of oral history made it possible for us to have very old records. Mesopotamian made copies of the Sumerian cylinder seals. And the same accounts can be found in Akkadian and Babylonian histories. There have been many, many tra mistranslations because we didn't have the knowledge to make sense of them. Dr. Horn relied heavily on Sitchin materials, saying that this should be viewed as our, own, as our real history. We were created as a hybrid race from native hominids to replace workers that had revolted in their gold mines. Our father is Anunnaki and our mother is Homo erectus. The first were infertile, however, and the chief engineer, Anki, was called on to make us fertile. The cloning, through use of Adam's rib, was the first genetic engineering on humans. Chapter 2 of the Bible reports on this. He differs with Sitchin in that there is only one type of hybrid, since there is evidence of other attempts at the project. I just want to interject here that I read a medical report one time that said if you're going to clone a human, and separate the chromosomes and get the leukocytes where you have the DNA to separate the uh, the X and Y chromosomes and get the XX female you would take a bone a rib would be the best place to get the marrow where you would get the DNA to create the female it would be uh, out of the rib for cloning and separation of sexes Anyway, back to the article. Articulture was begun. Even though hunting and gathering was easier, this led to overpopulation, which led to spreading of diseases and droughts that were designed to control mankind. The first civilization had a few elite that dominated the rest, just like today. Okay, uh, now here's this article. Throughout my life, it seems that the subject of Ea has cropped up from time to time. When I was a child, I was taught about the serpent in the Garden of Eden. Next, I was told that Ea was the same person as Enki who was a space person from Sirius, and he helped out mankind. Last of all, I made a trip down to the Malibu area of California to see a 30,000-year-old city and was told that the word California comes from the name of two deities. The first is called Kali, and the second was called Ia. Kali was changed to the word Kali, C-A-L-I, and the last part of California was changed from Ia to Ia, I-A. They put a word in the middle, which is the word form, which was changed to foreign with an N, and we have the name Cali Form Ia, or California, which means Cali and Ia formed the land. 
Here is some information that will make it uh, a little more sense. We have seen that the entity Enki, or Ea, is portrayed in the Mesopotamian historical epics as having played a crucial role in the genetic engineering of modern humans, and he has consistent, consistently championed the cause of humans, usually in the face of considerable opposition from the other gods, the Anunnaki. Enki, who is identified as the chief genetic engineer of the Anunnaki and the half-brother of Enlil in the Mesopotamian creation epics, is identified as a Syrian who protects humanity in the prism of Lyra, or Lyra, L-Y-R-A, by royal and priest. This channeled information certainly fits in well with historical information we have reviewed. The reader will recall that we have evidence of entities from the vicinity of the double star Sirius being involved in the ancient affairs of humans from the oral traditions of the Dogon tribe of West Africa. This plus historical data indicating that ancient Egypt was involved with entities from near Sirius leaves little doubt of a Syrian connection with ancient mankind. Enki's frequent compassionate behavior he displayed toward the human slaves of the Anunnaki bespeaks, bespeaks of an entity that was much more spiritually evolved than the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki would not want their slaves to know of an entity who had their best interests in mind and was actually trying to help them. On the other hand, the Anunnaki apparently needed the skills of Enki, especially in the genetic engineering of their slave species. It seems probable, therefore, that the Anunnaki would try to distort accounts of Enki, the Syrian, even to the point of making Enki one of their own. In the prism of Lyra, the Syrians were depicted as interfering with the plans of the Lyran group that were trying to create a species that was to have no knowledge of good and evil. I'm interjecting here. Do you hear the Garden of Eden story, you know? Eat the apple, learn of good and evil. But the Lyrans created the species of mankind, Adam and Eve, so that they would not know the difference of good and evil. And then here comes the Syrian, Enki, who would be the serpent, or Lucifer, and give them knowledge of good and evil and have them partake of the fruit. Anyway, back to the article. How the Lyran group was related to the Anunnaki of the Sumerian text is not made clear. Perhaps the Lyrans of the prism of Lyra and the Anunnaki of the Sumerians are one. Or perhaps we are looking at different levels, where the Anunnaki of the 12th planet in our solar system are actually carrying out the wishes of the Lyran group unknowingly. In any case, the prism of Lyra states that the Lyrans and the Syrians, who worked together in the creation of humans, the primitive workers, disagreed philosophically concerning their creation. While the Lyrans wanted to create a species devoid of the knowledge of polarity, or good and evil, the Syrians saw that humans could not evolve spiritually without this knowledge. Royal and priests point out that Enki, in the Sumerian text, is sometimes portrayed as a serpent, an evil serpent, and that perhaps this was, to ploy, was a ploy by Lyrans to keep humanity from following the instructions of the Syrians who were attempting to help humankind. Royal and priest imply that it was the Syrian group that encouraged Adam and Eve to eat of the tree of knowledge in the story of the Garden of Eden, as contained in the Bible. Let's see. The Syrians may have been at least temporarily thwarted by the Lyrans, the Anunnaki. They spell this word in two ways in this information, A-N-N-U-N-A-K-I and A-N-U-N-N-A-K-I in the Garden of Eden. But it seems that the Syrians had the last laugh. According to the prism of Lyra, the Syrian group ins inserted a latent DNA code in humans. The code is triggered by an accelerating vibration that occurs when a civilization begins to evolve spiritually. As Earth accelerates towards self-awareness and fourth density, which is occurring presently, don't you know it, the code is activated. Once activated, the human race unwinds its limited vision like a coil until the expanse of all that is becomes visible. It was their way of allowing humanity to eat from the tree of life after all. Perhaps your latent DNA code implanted by Enki or other members of the Syrian group is becoming active as you read this book. In any case, it is safe to say that entities from a planet near Sirius were very much involved in our biological, cultural, and spiritual evolution slash creation. So there you are, folks. Maybe that's why so many of the starseed people are now waking up and saying, why am I here? What am I here for? I've got to figure out who I am and what is my mission. Thank you for tuning in to the Plain Mundane Show. I'm Alex Aquarius. Please hit like and subscribe and ring the bell for future 
videos and you'll be notified. Have a great day.